Hello everyone. Today we will be discussing about colloids and the properties. Colloids are homogeneous mixture of two or more substances. The particle size is between 1 to 1000 nanometer. 1 nanometer means 10 raised to minus 9 meters. The substance present in small quantity in a colloid is called the dispersed phase and the one present in large quantity is called the dispersion medium. Colloids do not undergo sedimentation. These particles go through the filter paper without any filtration but they never pass through semi permeable membrane. Comparison between true solutions, colloids and suspensions. Colloids are having a particle range between 1 to 1000 nanometer. Its appearance is turbid and it is homogeneous in nature and it occurs like a translucent material. These substances can be separated easily by ultrafiltration. Classification of colloids Based on the physical states of dispersed phase and dispersion medium, there are eight different types of colloids. First one, solid dispersed in solid, that is known as solid solid. Solid dispersed in liquid is known as sol and solid dispersed in gas is known as aerosol. Liquid dispersed in solid is known as gel. Liquid dispersed in liquid is known as emulsion. Liquid dispersed in gas is known as aerosol. Gas dispersed in solid is known as solid sol and gas dispersed in liquid is known as foam. The relevant examples are given in the textbook. The main ones are given in the slide here. Based on the interaction between the dispersed phase and the dispersion medium, there are two types of colloids. Lyophilic salts and lyophobic salts. Lyophilic salts are solvent loving salts. These salts are prepared by just mixing the dispersed phase and the dispersion medium thoroughly, little by little. Since it is prepared just by mixing, we can get the dispersed phase and the dispersion medium back from it. So it is a reversible salt. Due to its interaction with the solvent, these are quite stable in nature. On the other hand, lyophobic salts are solvent hating salts and they are prepared with much difficulty using chemical methods like displacement reaction or hydrolysis. Since it is prepared as a result of chemical reactions, it is irreversible in nature. These are not having much interaction with the solvent particles so they are highly unstable and they are protected by adding a little bit of lyophilic salts into it. Such type of salts we call it as protective colloids. This can also be stabilized by adding certain emulsifying agents to it. Based on the particle size, we have three different types of colloids. Multimolecular colloid, where many many molecules aggregate together to form particles of the range 1 to 1000 nanometer, that is colloidal particle range. Examples are sulfur salt and gold salt. The next type we have is macromolecular colloids. Macromolecules or polymers like protein molecules form the dispersed phase here and when it is dis 
dissolved in a dispersion medium it forms the macromolecular colloids the third type we have is micelles micelles are otherwise known as associated colloids these are solutions which behave like electrolytes at low concentration but act as colloids at high concentration for example soap solution if we add one or two grains of soap or detergent into a bucket of water it will not lather soap instead it acts as an electrolyte that is it starts conducting electricity but at the same time if we add a scoop of detergent into a bucket of water it is found to lather and the solution becomes colloidal that is turbid in nature such solutions we call it as micelles these are some of the examples of colloidal systems that are used in our daily life it includes foam milk fog detergents aerosols then blood paint cosmetics now we come to the important property of colloids that is colloidal particles exhibit light scattering and this is shown by what is called tyndall effect what is this tyndall effect when light is passed through a colloidal solution placed in a dark room the path of the light becomes visible this is occurring due to the scattering of light by the dispersed particles this was first experimentally studied by the scientist named tyndall and so it is known as tyndall effect for tyndall effect to occur there are certain conditions Tyndall effect occurs when the diameter of the dispersed particles is comparable with the wavelength of the light used. Second point, the refractive indices of the dispersed phase and the dispersion medium must differ greatly in magnitude. Also, we have to view the solution with right angles to the direction of the beam of light